Uh, let me come over here. I'm Victoria Ransom. I am the founder and CEO of a company called Wildfire. I'm going to moderate this panel. Uh, and I have um, three or uh, four great speakers, I'm going to cheat with the names, um, who are going to present some, a combination of case studies and research to us. That's going to be uh, the main focus of, of this discussion. So I'm going to do uh, maybe a 10-minute overview of promotions and social and the landscape and why it's important, and then I'm going to turn it over to the most interesting people who are going to present some really, really great case studies. Uh, and then at the end, we should have about 10, 15 minutes or so for questions. So please uh, keep your questions in mind along the way, and um, we'll be looking forward to getting some good questions at the end. Uh, so introducing the, the panel here, we have David Heidenreich. Did I get that right? All right. Um, who's the VP of Digital at Smith Brothers Agency? And he and Kristen Rasmussen, who's from Nestle Ice Cream Brands, uh, are going to co present um, uh, some case studies around uh, Nestle Ice Cream Brands, um, some really, really interesting stuff there. So they're going to be a, a dual team. Uh, and then we've got uh, Ashmeed Ali. Uh, who's from Yahoo, he has a really impressive title, Director, Strategic Insights and Research, um, who's going to present some of his research. Um, so really excited for that. And then we have Nira Sharma, who has the title of Head of Member Marketing. I think he's responsible for five, almost 5 million members at Ideally. Um, so yeah, great lineup here. I'm really excited for them um, to present to you all. So the topic uh, here is, I'm just checking that the time's going down. Um, so we're talking about social and promotions and, and how promotions in the social context can be used by brands um, to get, to engage shoppers. Uh, so what I wanted to do is just spend a little bit of time kind of talking about the landscape of, of promotions. Uh, let me swap. Here we go. Um, so why social promotions? I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Wildfire. We're a, a, a social media marketing software company. So what we provide, this is not a pitch about Wildfire, but it's relevant to the topic. Um, what we provide is a, a suite of tools that help with all different aspects of your social media marketing. So everything from uh, analytics to help you understand how well you're performing to um, a content management system to manage your brand pages to tools to really help you message and communicate with your audience. But where we got started uh, was around providing um, tools that make it really easy for companies to run different kinds of engaging social media marketing campaigns. And what we think about with promotions are things like coupons, deals, um, user-generated contests, sweepstakes, uh, all different kind of campaigns that have shown to be uh, really, really important to your social media marketing strategy. And one thing we got asked along the way, right from the early days, was kind of like, okay, yeah, this is great to engage consumers, but aren't people going to get sick of promotions? Um, and so part of this is just to sort of to walk you through and show how they really haven't. But um, one statistic that I found really astounding um, uh, in the early days when we were looking into promotions, uh, which really gets at this issue is, are people going to get sick of promotions? Uh, a study was done around, this was specifically around sweepstakes, but I think it absolutely can apply to other kinds of promotions like coupons. It asked, um, uh, it looked at the percentage of online users, so this is not just social media users, this is all online users that engage with sweepstakes. 75% of all online users engage with sweepstakes at least once, once a year and 25% engage at least once a week. So these are things that um, have long been uh, engaging to consumers, have long been important to marketers as part of their marketing tool suite. And I think in the context of the social world, they've, um, they've become even more interesting because now they're this way to, to take people's engagement with promotions and have them really spread it to others. Um, so at Wildfire, we really think about um, there being three aspects of social media marketing. So there's the grow phase, which is all about how you're going to grow your audience, how you're going to get your fans and followers. At the end of the day, if you don't have an audience, it's really hard to succeed in social. So I know there's, um, you know, there's a, a, a lot of discussion around, well, social's got to be more than just growing fans and followers. Yes, absolutely, it does. But at the end of the day, if you don't have an audience, then it's really hard to succeed. So that's a really important aspect of social media marketing. Uh, the other um, areas around engaging. So once you've got that audience, you've really got to keep people 
engage, you've got to educate them about your business, build loyalty, have them spread the word to their friends. Um, and so engagement is a, is a really fundamental part of succeeding in social media marketing. And then finally, of course, what you're ultimately trying to do is turn this social audience into customers and, and monetize them. So what we found is um, promotions are really pretty critical to every single one of these aspects of social media marketing. And so I wanted to go through each one of those um, now and present a few stats that sort of uh, provide some evidence for this and also a few um, client examples. So in terms of growing uh, your audience, um, Pretty much, there have been a lot of studies that have asked people, um, you know, what is the reason that you become a fan or a follower of, of a brand? And the number one reason in any study that I've ever seen is to get access to different kinds of deals and promotions. I think, you know, if you are a really inherently cool uh, viral brand like maybe Apple, you don't need to do anything. People just come and want to be your fan. But for most businesses, the reality is you've got to give people an encouragement and a bit of a kickstart. And so promotions have proven to be really the number one way to, to get people to become um, your fan or a follower. Uh, another study showed that um, companies that run contests, which is one kind of promotion, on average have twice as many fans as, as those that don't. So in terms of this audience building, um, promotions are, are really critical. Here's um, uh, some charts just to illustrate this. So these are um, showing the growth in fans from a variety of different companies. I could have put another 50 charts that look just like this. And when you see that massive spike up, it's when companies have launched um, promotions. Uh, and as you'll see, the, that massive growth, in, in this case it's fans, um, doesn't sustain, so you've got to keep running these kind of campaigns. But it's it's the most surefire way that we've seen at Wildfire to really boost your audience. Um, you know, to, to give you an example, so I think the graph at the bottom um, left is is for a company called SugarSync, which is a, p a personal cloud solution. So it's not necessarily the the sexiest. Um, product, or they're an extremely useful one, they managed to grow their fan base from 5,000 to 100,000 in, uh, I think it was about four months, through running promotions. And in fact, what they did is uh, every time they got to another, they increased by another 10,000 fans, they gave away some iPads. So, you know, you, you don't have to be the world's coolest brand to really succeed uh, in, in social media. If anyone's interested, by the way, um, I got these charts from a a free product that, that we offer at Wildfire. It's, um, it's at monitor.wildfireapp.com where you can go and compare any company in terms of their fan and follower growth. So if you want to monitor your competitors and get weekly alerts and things, um, you can do that with that product. Uh, so that's around growing your audience and how promotions are, are fundamental to that. In terms of engaging, we've also found that um, Promotions are a pretty critical part to getting people to, to come back and, and want to um, keep a relationship with your business on social. Uh, so a, a study by DDB uh, that came out a few months ago asked people, um, you know, what are, the, what are the main things that brands can do to really make their, their fan pages or their fan page experience better? And again, the, the um, top things that came up, number one was deals. Number two was entertainment, and um, within entertainment was explicitly listed things like contests and sweepstakes. So again, in terms of what people are looking for to, to be engaged, um, promotions are, are coming up again. Um, here's a, an interesting study um, which gets at the question that we get asked a lot, which is, okay, great, I've managed to grow my audience because I ran uh, a sweepstakes, but... but you know, who are these people that have entered it and do they really give a damn about my business? Um, and this study was pretty impressive, I think. It, it said, and this is against, this is specifically around contests, um, that 90% of people who have engaged with a contest are more likely to recommend that brand to their friends after they've engaged. Uh, and so I think the options were, um, are you sometimes often or always more likely, and 90% and um, put themselves into those categories. What we find, though, is it's important to make sure that you're... Pr the, um, so if you're running a sweepstakes, for example, make sure that the prize is relevant to the kind of people that you're wanting to market to, i.e., um, you know, if you are a in the food industry, then think about giving away 
cookbooks or cooking classes, something that's going to attract people that are foodies versus an iPad, where you might get a bunch of people that are really into technology and couldn't give a damn about your business. So I think it is important to be, to be thoughtful. Um, and then just a, another study that, um, you know, we, we also certainly hear from people that say, okay, I've got all these fans, but what's a fan really worth to me? Um, is, it really, is it really beneficial? And I thought this was really impressive. Uh, again, from the DDB study that said, 92% of people say that since becoming a fan, they're more likely to recommend that brand to their friends. Um, and on the engagement front, we've seen so many great examples of companies doing interesting things with promotions uh, to really build engagement and, and um, continued interactions with, with their audience. A couple of examples here that I like. One was with Virgin, uh, Virgin Atlantic. They had a great campaign. Uh, where they created this persona of a, um, of a flight attendant, her name was Linda, and basically they gave clues on their brand page or their fan page about where in the world Linda was traveling at that particular time. It's a little bit like, I don't know if any of you have seen the movie Amelie with the gnomes, um, so I think they got inspired by that. Um, and so people were able to come back on a very regular basis and get the clues and respond and try to figure out where it was that Linda was traveling. Potentially that could have got a lot of engagement on its own, but what really gave it the kicker was adding a promotional element to it, whereby those that engaged in that campaign uh, went into the draw to win um, business class tickets, uh, I think around the world, business class tickets. So, you know, that, uh, from that promotion, uh, Virgin was able to get thousands of people engaging on a daily basis with, with their brand. Um, uh, Photobox, that's the other example here, did something... Um, uh, different in that it only lasted for 24 hours. Basically, it was a photo contest. You were able to upload or ask to upload photos. Every hour, they gave a different task. Like, this hour, we want you to upload photos of um, this topic. The next hour, or something else. Different prizes associated with different uh, each hour. So a fantastic way to get continual engagement for a 24-hour period and obviously getting people sharing a lot during those 20, that 24-hour period. Um, it's not a huge company. They managed to get 4 million views of that campaign uh, in tens of thousands of people uploading photos and then sharing it with all of their friends. Um, so, you know, there's just two of what we've seen are hundreds or thousands of examples of ways to continually engage your audience using promotions. Um, and then finally, everybody's favorite topic around you know, how do you actually turn these social media users and these promotion entrants into, into customers, into people that are going to pay you money? Um, and again, we found uh, great, great, great examples of companies who are really measuring ROI and getting great ROI in terms of their social media marketing efforts. But in most cases, there's been some kind of promotional element associated uh, with it. Uh, so again, um, a stat here... Uh, um, that gets at this issue of, you know, okay, I've got people entering my promotions, are they really worth anything to me? Uh, this study showed that 85% of consumers are more likely to buy from a brand after entering a contest. Um, and then here, a study that I just read recently, which I thought was really interesting, getting at this issue of what are fans are really worth to you, showed that... Um, Facebook pages convert people into paying customers at a much higher rate than, than all other forms of online advertising, four times better than display ads. So I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, and, and just a few examples here of how powerful or how great the ROI can be in social and how powerful promotions can be. Um, this first example here was from a company called uh, Blowfish Shoes. They're an online shoe retailer. Um, and they did a campaign that actually lasted a whole year, so it was pretty ambitious. They basically gave away a free pair of shoes every day. Um, doing something every day works really, really well because it gets continual engagement and then also you're able to announce every single day a new winner. Um, but what they did is they cleverly tied that into encouraging people to buy from them. So when you went in to see what shoe was being given away on that particular day, you could see a video um, about, uh, about that shoe. You could click through to the company's website and browse more shoes. They found that 65% of the people that engaged with that campaign actually went on and browsed the website and spent quite a lot of time looking at the shoes. And 50% of the sales that they made during that one year period came from people that engaged with this campaign. Um, example on the right there is uh, was So Delicious, um, which is a coconut uh, drink or coconut water. 
uh, drink, they ran a campaign for 100 days. Again, there was a, um, a daily component to this. There was prizes being given away on a daily basis. Uh, they managed to get... Um, they get. I think they grew their fans by 10 times, which is great, but they were able to increase sales by uh, 74% during the period of that campaign. So, you know, phenomenal results coming from social. The example in the middle here, Feel Unique, which is an online beauty products retailer, um, they had a, something that we've seen work really well. They were, again, I think it lasted for three weeks, they were giving away a prize, um, if not daily, then, then on a very regular basis. What they did, though, is that um, there were some sort of major prizes, but everybody won something. We've seen this work really well. But what that, what that prize could be is, is really just a coupon. So it might be you get 20% off or you get free shipping or, or some kind of, of coupon. Um, and again, that led to fantastic sales for them. I think they, it's not a huge company. They got 250 new customers, made $80,000 over that three-week uh, duration of the campaign, which represented 300% ROI for them. So, you know, I think at all stages of... Um, all aspects of social media marketing, we found that promotions play a pretty critical, critical role in that. And uh, with that, I want to pass it over to our other panelists who are going to give you much more in-depth um, case studies than what I've been able to give uh, around this topic. So pass it over to you guys. All right. That's your contact info. Hello everyone, um, David and I are here today to talk to you guys about ice cream. Um, my name is Kristen, I work at Nestle Dryers um, in an interactive marketing role. So I, my job is to really work closely with the brand teams to develop their um, digital strategies and identify ways that it can fit into their overall um, marketing mix. But I also work really closely, closely with our agency partners on um, the day-to-day -day community management across several of our social networks. And my name is, my mic is not working, there it is. <laughs> my name is David Heidenreich, I'm a VP of engagement at Smith Brothers and we're the digital agency of record for uh, Nestle Ice Cream Snack. And my job is to keep an eye on trends, emerging technologies, and help uh, the brand capitalize on what's going on in the digital space. Great. So I'm sure everyone is familiar with the, um, the purchase funnel. Um, and we um, have started looking at it through the lens of um, an author named Joseph Jaffe. I don't know if you guys are familiar. He wrote a book called Flip the Funnel which is really about putting the same amount of emphasis at the front end of the funnel as it is at the other end of the funnel. So he, he talks about a bow tie effect. Um, from a bow tie perspective, what's nice about the social space is, in fact, social can support um, objectives at any um, place along the bow tie. So if you're, if you're looking at an awareness tactic um, up front, it can do that. We're going to show you three micro case studies today, uh, quickly moving through them in uh, three to five minutes apiece. Um, the first one is social gaming for awareness with Dryers and Edie's ice cream. And they had a particular challenge around um, the fact that their product was all natural and they wanted to get that word out there. So awareness, and they, they used um, Zenga and um, Farmville to get the word out. The second is a uh, heartbeat of promotions and coupons to drive active consideration. Um, if you're familiar with the drumstick brand, whenever I say that to you, you remember that ice cream cone with the chocolate on top and the peanuts, and you're saying, oh, yeah, I love those things, right? Well, unaided awareness is their challenge. So once people uh, think about that brand, they say, hey, I'll go have one of those. So we wanted to, to drive active consideration and move, move the needle um, from a purchase standpoint for that brand. And then on the tail end, on the flip side of the bow tie, we're looking to ignite advocacy for a really passionate community um, for the Skinny Cow brand. Um, at, a, at a really precise time whenever they were launching a new product line um, and extending out of ice cream into confections and candy. And so you can see that social, um, and we're going to demonstrate that social works along all, all facets of the bow tie. So first up is our um, case study around the building awareness for dryers and EDs fruit bars. So in 2010, it was the first year um, any advertising support had really been given to the sub product line under the Dryer ZDs brand um, around a campaign called Real Fruit Naturally. 
Um, we also started doing a cause marketing program called Communities Take Root, where consumers could visit the Communities Take Root website, learn about different sites around the country um, that were all vying for a community orchard to be planted um, in their neighborhoods. And so in 2011, the goal was to really blow this out because we had a lot of success in 2010. And the goal was really to bring our programs and our real fruit naturally message to a much broader audience. So we knew that our consumers highly indexed in online gaming. Um, and with this real fruit natural message and our, our communities take root plannings, we really felt that there was a synergy there with Farmville. Um, and so we did a Farmville integration this June, um, sort of at the kickoff of our ice cream season. Um, from, from an implementation standpoint, you can imagine how this would go down if you're a Farmville player or not. Um, Farmville has 60 to 65 to 70 million active consumers, um, uh, game players, um, right in our target audience sweet spot. Um, they were enticed to go ahead and plant the crop uh, through their marketplace and went ahead and did so, planted the crop and, and, and moved it through the, the process of growing it. Um, uh, Farmville went ahead and, and, and pushed this uh, out to all of their consumers. Our consumers, the, the game players, were encouraged and, and actually did share this information as well um, on their wall. Um, and we got uh, uh, millions and millions of, uh, of people moving through the process of growing the crops. Um, uh, very, very um, high active uh, engagement and um, brand interaction time as people took the time to, to grow uh, these fruit bar crops. So in addition to the in-game plantings, we um, extended the promotion to the freezer aisle where we had an on-pack instant win, win sweepstakes, which actually drove you to our Facebook page. Um, so it was a nice way to tie the real world offline um, shopper experience back onto our Facebook page so that we could re-engage with them there. Yeah, and that was a nice way to keep the, the process going beyond that, that one week time period. So yeah, the results um, were pretty impressive. We had a billion impressions in the US, so we really hit upon that, that goal of mass awareness. Um, we had a lift in purchase intent, which you know the brand teams are always really happy to see when that metric moves. Um, we had a 65% increase in Facebook likes, um, and we found that a majority of those who were exposed to the Fruit Bars ad actually took action by liking um, our brand on Facebook or going to the Communities Take Root website, which was great because that was one of the underlying goals of this Farmville integration was to get people aware of the great work that we were doing with Communities Take Root. Yeah, and I think the impressive number there is the one billion impressions looking at, you know, the, the CPM on that was phenomenal um, and a very valuable um, a media placement. Uh, so, okay, so Drumstick, um, moving through that brand, their goal uh, was to get people to, to increase their purchase intent. And again, the brand is one of those brands that sits out there you might not think about all the time, but as soon as you see it, you're like, hey, I want to go back and enjoy that again. So our goal was to get people um, um, thinking about the brand and also foster deeper connection, emotional connection with the brand um, that we, so that we could engage with them over a longer term. And so what we went ahead and did um, was a heartbeat of promotions this past summer. And it was all rooted in um, a campaign theme uh, around uh, the term uh, Forever Summer. And Forever Summer really was to bring back the, those emotional thoughts, sort of nostalgic thoughts around um, childhood thoughts of uh, having a great time in, in the summer. And uh, uh, what we wanted to do over the course of, of uh, four to five months was, was make sure that we hit upon that message. Um, the first promotion that we launched with was win $5,000, win one of uh, uh, a portion of $5,000 in, in gifts and prizes um, that, that again get you thinking about summer, summer music, summer books, summer movies, things along those lines. Um, in between the promotions, we would run coupons. Um, so it was this heartbeat of promotion, coupon, promotion, coupon. And um, the second uh, promotion here we're showing you is. Um, for the 100,000 uh, cone giveaway. So on the first day of summer, which is a date the brand is going to try to own, um, they're going to be giving away, or they did give away 100,000 cones. Um, uh, and was, this was the one where we really saw the skyrocket in our, um, our fan base uh, growth. There was a, a bit of coupons in between, and then we went to our fourth, or th I'm sorry, third promotion at the end here, which is just Beachy, where you could win um, 
uh, a trip to one of America's best beaches. So yeah, as you can see, these um, this heartbeat of promotions and coupons really kept um, people coming to our page, and they were sharing that they were interacting on the page, and so there was a nice um, increase. We also did a Facebook ad buy um, to coincide with a few of these, but um, you know, in six months we grew our fan base from around like 11,000 to 665,000 fans, um, and while growing the fan base, we um, actually saw really great engagement rates. It was, it was something that we had talked about that, you know, if we're growing this huge fan base, are people still gonna be really interested in the brand or are we getting the right, the right audience there? And um, the, this, this yellow line here is actually um, what our engagement rate has been and it's been really promising to see that we have such an active community of fans and so, um, it's something that the brand team's really excited to, to work with next year. You know, there's a ton of opportunity there to do more engaging promotions and, I don't know, maybe hit a million fans. <laughs> um, but we also had some, some great trial. Our coupons are, are redeeming 10% above our internal benchmark. Um, and although we can't really share numbers, you know, the business is definitely moving in a positive, healthy direction as far as um, purchase frequency, which was one of the main one of the main goals for this year, so we we're really pleased to see that. And our last example is from the Skinny Cow brand. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with it. It's a low-fat ice cream, um, so all the taste without the guilt. And so we have this really passionate group of, of women who love the brand, but they also like talking about the brand. It's really been a brand that's been built with word of mouth because women just love telling their mom, their friend, their sisters all about this great ice cream that they can eat without any of the guilt and it fits into their diet and their active lifestyle and so they're really eager to share. Um, yeah, that is a baby in a cow suit stuffed inside of a skinny cow box and she actually tattooed her midriff there with the skinny cow logo. So that's an enthusiastic consumer. Um, we looked at that consumer who was really passionate and, and thought of ways to tap, tap uh, that passion. One of the things that we did, if you think about your website and your CRM program, um, you may have um, a, a list of folks in your database. Nestle does as well and they have something called a, a, a global user ID where we would, we would know who that user is and we can, we can track them and send emails to them. That's great for the website. Then you have activity on your Facebook page where you can't necessarily tie um, specific um, and can't necessarily attribute specific actions and posts directly to an individual consumer. And so what we did was, was analyze that and said, hey, you know what, what if during the login process, we, uh, during the uh, registration process, we encouraged people to actually connect through OpenGraph um, their, uh, uh, their Facebook profile with their indi individual I ID on, on Facebook, or on, on the website. So now we have a connection where we can monitor what a consumer might be doing um, on the website, if they take any actions on the website, if they, if they post or comment, if they like a particular product, we can now tie that um, directly, that Facebook action directly to the consumer. And so what we've started to do now is actually reward advocacy instead of just uh, purchase or, you know, we, in monitoring click-through rates on emails, we can actually watch, monitor, and reward advocacy so that our most loyal fans, what we're starting to do is give them um, better coupons, we know what their interests are, what their, what their, what their favorite products are, giving them uh, swag and encouraging them to come back um, and, and do the same thing. Um, we took that to the next level when we extended, uh, when we planned to extend the, uh, the brand into, uh, out of ice cream into, um, into the confections aisle with a, with a uh, candy product launch. So uh, before, the, before we were launching the product, we put um, sort of a top secret post, a top secret tab up on the, uh, on the uh, Facebook page where people could register. Our most passionate consumers could come in and register. And uh, we would promise to send them something really nice. Didn't say what it was, um, just left it hanging out there. Um, we selected a, a number of them and sent them a package of, of the new product. Now this was before two weeks before PR was released, it wasn't in stores. The first people that got our product were our most passionate, loyal consumers, the people who care the most about the product. Those people that took the time to, to tattoo themselves and um, dress up their kids and had a great time, have a great time with the brand. And we tapped that passion to get them um, drumming up excitement inside of our community. Um, and uh, uh, it worked exceptionally well. So they got a, a package of the, of the candy as well as 
um, a, a video camera, a flip cam, and some other things that they could uh, um, begin to share with us. So we got some really great photos, people with their cats, <laughs> with their kids, um, you know, really showing the enthusiasm for this new product. Um, and, and we're really pleased with, with how much engagement we got out of it, actually. 90% um, of women who got the package posted photos. So that not only, they, they weren't just sharing it with their friends, they were actually going back to our Facebook page and posting it on our page so that the other people in the community could see what it was and you know, our, our skinny cow Facebook fans also knew what, what was coming, um, the new candy. Um, we have a 78% engagement rate on our Facebook page. Um, our loyalty program membership, um, so we launched Club Skinny in June um, and we have now more than 110,000 um, members. Um, and we have 3.2 million earned impressions via Club Skinny. So that's when people are, they're sharing their like, it all shows up in their friends' news feeds that, hey, you know, Jane just liked this product on, on the um, Skinny Cow website. Um, and, and to tie it all back to the business results, because ultimately that is, <laughs> that is what matters, um, the confections launch has been really successful. Um, its distribution is beyond what was originally projected. Um, we've driven incremental um, consumers to the Skinny Cow brand franchise, which is great. And then overall, we've grown the total Skinny Cow business by more than 20%. So in conclusion, um, you know, as, as we've shown, there's always, there's a place in the bow tie. Um, the social media has a tactic within the bow tie to help you grow fans, engage with fans, and then turn those engaged fans into advocates on your behalf. Um, we found it's especially powerful once you have grown that fan base that you can kind of flip the switch on and, and activate them by driving trial or um, being advocates for you. Um, and, and lastly, it's important to approach it with a long-term vision. You know, each of these brands, we had, this was sort of like a year one or year two for us on, on what our overall long-term social media strategy is. And it's something that um, Nestle is really committed to, growing, growing Facebook and, and social network communities so that we can activate our fans and, and have deeper relationships with them. Um, ice cream is a highly, um, they're not, it's, it, everyone loves ice cream, but not a lot of people are brand loyal. So it's really important to us to, to become, to develop emotional connections with our consumer and we, we think social media is the way to do it. Thanks. So thanks, we'll turn it over to you guys. Hi, my name is Ashmi Dali, and I'm with Yahoo uh, in the Strategic Insights and uh, Research Group, focusing a lot uh, of our research on uh, new and emerging media. Uh, I, um, I tend to focus on mobile, social, video, uh, and also connected uh, devices like connected TV. Um, uh, so this is uh, the presentation uh, um, on the impact of social features, and um, um, I think uh, just to step back a bit and and to really understand why social is important for Yahoo. Uh, throughout all of our properties, we have a social uh, a layer. We allow our, um, our consumers to post a content to Facebook, to Twitter. Uh, we allow them uh, uh, easy access to email it to friends. Um, and uh, we really want uh, uh, the referral track of, uh, the referral traffic uh, back from Facebook um, and the like. So let's go through uh, just some of the details of, of the research. Um, uh, one of the products that we offer is a social features voting tool. And uh, um, on our Yahoo Movie site, we, uh, uh, we allowed consumers to interact with uh, a, a, a voting tool before the Oscars aired. And we conducted the survey really to better understand if social features around content um, impaired uh, with content uh, drive a greater engagement. Uh, we wanted to understand uh, the impact on advertiser effectiveness. So how does this impact unaided awareness? How does it impact purchase intent, uh, unlikelihood to recommend, and other, and other key dimensions 
uh, for our advertiser. And do consumers uh, uh, like these social features? Uh, so we partnered with DB5 and we interviewed about 1,500 online entertainment fans. Um, we divided uh, the sample up into two cells. There was a control cell and an entertainment cell. And I'll get into that right now. Uh, so we had a, um, um, a control site, which is the site on the bottom. Uh, this was our Yahoo Movies Oscars uh, microsite uh, with all of our, our great content, um, our original content, and also content from our partners. Um, and we also, um, I mean, this did not include any of the social features voting tool. Uh, uh, but it did include an ad from uh, this auto brand manufacturer. Um, in the test site up on top, uh, there was, um, um, it was the social content, or uh, excuse me, it was the content uh, uh, paired with the social feature. So we allowed consumers to, uh, to pick uh, their best actress, their best actor, and then push that out to, uh, to Facebook uh, uh, for their friends to react to. Um, and, we also, so after they voted on uh, the, the social feature site, they were also given the option of liking uh, uh, this particular auto brand manufacturer's page to see how the rest of the population voted uh, for that particular actor or actress. Uh, so you'll see um, um, across, uh, so you'll see in the study we compared the control, which is uh, um, which is no social feature, with uh, the voting site, which is um, our paired content uh, with the social feature voting tool. And what we see is that socially, uh, I mean, what we see is that pairing our uh, content uh, with social features definitely impacts uh, brand measures. First, um, uh, we asked respondents um, if uh, they thought the auto brand manufacturer uh, fit with this type of site. So it was the Yahoo Movies uh, microsite for uh, the Oscars program. And we saw that about 65% of consumers uh, saw a natural pairing with uh, uh, the social ads, uh, with um, um, uh, the sponsorship, and the great content. Um, and when we take a look at just this ad effectiveness um, a report card where we compare the control site. Again, that did not include any social features, um, a voting tool uh, versus uh, the voting site, which allowed you the ability to send that to Facebook and like the auto brand manufacturer page. We see that the voting site really um, had significant impact on um, an auto brand's favorability and also purchase intent. Uh, um, in another study that Nielsen conducted, uh, they saw that friends, uh, uh, that purchase intent increased uh, four times uh, when you included uh, uh, friends as part of that process. Uh, but we also saw uh, specific qualities around leadership and innovation also grow. So um, is the brand um, uh, uh, technologically advanced? Uh, is it um, a more forward thinking um, and a progressive brand. Uh, more people, when they were exposed to the social voting feature, uh, saw a significant impact um, uh, among those metrics. But they also saw the brand as a leader in the automotive space. They saw it as better uh, than other auto brands. And um, I think what was most interesting is um, also measures around connection also increased. Uh, we saw this in, in other studies that we conducted that really the human element of adding these social features and allowing your friends to comment uh, really enhanced uh, the brand's uh, um, the brand's, the brand's trustworthiness. So about 13% increase. Uh, so, uh, so we saw about a 13% increase uh, from the control to the test cell in is an auto brand I trust. Uh, uh, there was a 17% increase in is a brand that really cares about its customers. Uh, there's also, um, um, it also increases talkability. That was about a 23% increase. So, so is a brand that I would talk about with others. Um, it also creates a dynamism for the auto brand. Uh, the auto brand is seen as uh, doing a lot for 
of the moment when paired, uh, when the social features uh, voting tool is paired uh, with our Oscars content. Uh, um, it made them want to find out more information about the brand, and it also uh, made them think that the auto brand was moving with the times when uh, the auto brand was a part of uh, this social uh, feature. So brands are also appreciated when they sponsor this type of content. Uh, this is uh, the results uh, specifically from uh, the social feature tool or those who were exposed to that. And just after one exposure, we saw that about 40% uh, liked the auto brand even more. And what's interesting is, is when we look at engagement, uh, that is actual click-through rate, uh, we see that a standard static online ad will see around a 0.2 or 0.5 uh, click-through rate, but when, we, uh, uh, but when we look at the click-through rate of ads when it's paired uh, with a, the social content features, um, it increases dramatically to about 1.8 to 1.9%. So we also looked at uh, those heavy engagers of the social features of voting, uh, voting tool. That is, they voted and they submitted it to Facebook and they also liked uh, the auto brand match. Uh, the auto brand uh, fan page uh, on Facebook. And we saw that, uh, again, the greater engagement that you have with these social features, uh, the greater lifts in brand attributes. We saw great lifts in, um, or extremely significant lifts in uh, the advertiser is a perfect fit uh, with the site. Um, it, um, it gives them interesting news about the brand. Uh, um, it makes them uh, feel like the brand is moving with the times. Uh, it also impacts uh, uh, key advertiser segments that uh, users really want, or that advertisers and marketers really want uh, to, uh, to reach. So we have influencers, that is uh, people who share information about products and services, give a lot of recommendations about auto brands. Uh, uh, we saw significant increases across all metrics across the board among among frequent social sharers, among Facebook users, and among Yahoo Movie users as well. We saw increases, um, especially in more of the human element attributes, like is, a, um, is an easygoing brand, is a friendly brand, is a fun brand. So just in closing, just to answer some of the questions that we had um, um, in our beginning slide, we see, so do social features around content drive greater engagement? Yes, definitely. The brand is appreciated more, a more find a perfect fit with the site. Uh, engagement in terms of click-through rate uh, uh, is also impressive when you compare that uh, uh, to static ads. So do social features impact advertiser effectiveness and brand response? And we see that increases across the board in technological innovation, uh, um, in, uh, um, in connection, in, um, um, in leadership uh, uh, was seen when uh, the brand sponsored the social features voting tool. Uh, paired with the Oscars content. Uh, we also saw increases, again, in purchase intent, which is a very difficult metric to move, uh, so that was also very impressive. Uh, uh, their likelihood to recommend also increased, and also uh, the brand's favorability when it was paired uh, with this social features uh, uh, voting tool. And do consumers really like these kind of ads? Yes. Um, a lot of consumers, uh, 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 this wasn't in the deck, but a lot of consumers found uh, uh, the interactiveness of the site to be fun and extremely engaging. Um, it also influences those key segments that I think uh, advertisers really want to reach. Influencers, uh, heavy Facebook fan users, uh, Yahoo Movie users uh, specifically uh, because it was, a, um, uh, um, it was a pairing with our Oscars site. Um, and also uh, those heavy engagers of social content. Anyways. All right, thank you. How you doing? Um, my, slide. my name is Neeraj Sharma, head of uh, member marketing at Ideally. Hopefully most of you are members. If not, go check it out uh, today. As Victoria was, was mentioning earlier, we have uh, nearly 5 million members um, and growing quickly every day. So social is a real critical part of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, both from a promotion standpoint, which we're talking about a lot today, as well as having a member conversation and a, and a engagement level with our members that is a personal touch and a one-on-one -on -one dialogue. So it's really critical for us to 
uh, as we differentiate ourselves from a lot of the noise in the space that we come across as the brand that, as one of the brands that are having a real nice dialogue with her members and they really resonate with that. So some stats about um, ideally, uh, we're an online retailer specializing in limited time sales, so 36 to 40 hour sales, uh, focusing predominantly on fashion, women's, kids, and uh, men's. We also have a home decor section as well as travel. So social is particularly critical to us because of the limited time uh, aspect of the sites and the fact that there's limited inventory, there's always a, a rush and a game aspect, I'm on the wrong slide, and a game aspect to it. So having that real-time conversation is, is critical. Uh, we launched a site in the middle of 2007. We're based in downtown New York in Soho. So battle the cab to get up here, obviously. Um, we have over, oh, nearly 250 employees, and hopefully many of you have seen, we were just named by Inc. 500 as the number one fastest growing company uh, in the U.S. So we're very proud of that. Uh, that came out the last couple months. As far as uh, who we reach, um, we have a very attractive demographic to um, our brand partners. We, at the bottom of the slide, we talk about we have over 2,800 brands that we work with and serve as a marketing platform for them to move inventory as well as uh, get access to a 5 million user base. Predominantly female at this point, um, mid-30s average age, but we do have two, several types of customers. We have the young fashionista as well as the established mom with kids. So. The average number is, is perhaps misleading. We do have a, a broad segment of, of, of members, uh, college educated, very uh, wealthy, affluent, and indexing highly towards the, the high DMAs to, that, that we know. So nearly five million members as far as social engagement, uh, inching closer to 200,000 Facebook followers, um, 28,000 on Twitter, and as I mentioned earlier, 2,800 brand partners that we work with. Um, as far as how we engage our customers and the way we're structured, we have member marketing, which includes every channel conceivably that we could touch a member with. And social media is, is kind of the glue that holds that all together. Um, we like to keep our messaging consistent across all these channels. We need to stay new in a sense of uh, the messaging is new, the product is relevant, we're staying fresh, and there's tons of daily deal sites out there. Everyone gets 20 emails a day, so we have to make sure we are coming through with a message that's on point, on trend, and, uh, and unique to, uh, to all the folks out there. Um, and differentiated, we talked about. So as far as our communication strategy, we like to, we, we have a strategy of having it all integrated with one simple message that we, as we mentioned earlier, across all of our channels. Social media is, is a key, Facebook and Twitter, which we'll get into more detail, uh, but also we have a very robust feedback loop. Uh, we talk to our customers on the phone, we'll literally call them up and ask them what they're thinking um, and what they'd like to change, and we take that feedback and incorporate it into what we do. Uh, we do surveys um, after each customer service interaction, after someone purchases something from us, so we've got our finger on the pulse of what actually is happening with our members. Uh, customer service is really tightly integrated across the company with member engagement and loyalty as well as social media. Um, anyone who works on our social media team trains with our customer service reps so they know how to handle a problem uh, like any other rep in our company. So that's a that's critical part of our social media dialogue. As far as customer analytics, as probably a lot of you have seen, our Facebook engaged folks are some of our best customers and are also our best advocates. So um, we're very careful to keep them happy and keep them engaged in what we're doing, give them sneak peeks of things we're doing and make sure that they're out there talking about us uh, in a positive light. As far as Facebook is concerned, um, I don't know if you could see the, the, uh, the images here, but as I mentioned earlier, we want to have the, our voice be very conversational um, and kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one dialogue and members feel comfortable with that. It definitely resonates with them. Um, and one of the key things we have is fast response. So I was reading a stat the other day, I don't remember the exact percentage, but even on a customer service standpoint, when there's inquiries on Facebook that have to do with a problem with an item they bought or customer services are super high percentage, something like 60 or 70% of responses don't even get responded to or inquiries don't get responded to, which to us is unacceptable. We're 100% on that and we respond very quickly. Even if it's a negative feedback or something that potentially could, could be construed by a member in a negative way, we're sure to at least get back to them and say we're working on it so our members feel like we're out there in the community and know what's going on. Um, we also have uh, our editors and editors' picks go on the site on Facebook on a daily or, or a couple times a week basis to say this is what a great thing we have on sale today, come and check it out, and people respond, our members respond really well to that. Um, we have a like or dislike section with a topic like, um, you know, high heel shoes, do you like it? And our members usually chime in uh, in drones to actually weigh in on their opinions on that. 
And another topic is, uh, or a nice feature we have is something called the Great Debate, which will take a topic that has particular interest of that day, you know, Kim Kardashian's wedding or something, and someone will chime in with what their feelings are. So that's a great way of having, we're not trying to overly sell our products or anything, but it's a, it's a one-on-one dialogue that, that really helps. Uh, as far as customer service is concerned, as I, as I mentioned earlier, there's a dedicated email address from fa- that our Facebook members can respond to and that we communicate with them via uh, so that they know that we are, if they have any issues, that they have an address that didn't fit or something, a lot of times our members will go to Facebook or Twitter and talk about that, and we're sure to respond that, to that very quickly. Um, I think a negative, I don't know what the stat is, but a negative review on a social media uh, forum is worth like 10 negative reviews on your site. So we, we make sure we're, we're all very much on top of that. Um, we also work very closely with our, uh, our partners and our brands. Um, uh, recently, I had a sale with Maria, Mary Badescu, which is a skincare lotion, and we had a live chat during the sale and days leading up to the sale where people go to ask questions about skincare, about the particular product, and that works nicely in real time as we're selling that product on the site at the same time that chat is going on. And Facebook is a great driver uh, and medium for us to drive, uh, drive sales. Um, lastly, on the innovation side, uh, we do giveaways. We do promotions on our site. And one of the things we've done with our giveaways is built in the capability to uh, invite a friend to participate in the giveaway. So typically, you have to be a member to be in the giveaway. But then we built in a feature where you could actually invite some of your friends to participate in the giveaway, whether it's a $100 gift card or a shopping spree or something really cool. Um, and that's a great way for us to use that channel as an as engagement and acquisition tool. Uh, as far as Twitter is concerned, um, like I said, it really meshes with our overall message that we do on Facebook and with our members. We love the concept of surprise and delight, which we, which we use on our, all of our member engagement programs. You know, we don't want to be overly promotional, but we do want to reward our advocates from time to time. We do want to uh, find our engaged fans and make sure... We're giving them the love that they deserve. We will find out when someone on Twitter uh, is calling us out and saying, ideally, great job. We'll personally reach out to them and you know, give them a credit or, uh, or uh, early access to a sale or something like that. So we're really on top of how our members are, are talking about us, in particular our advocates. And then the people who are not our advocates, I don't know if you could see this example, but there was someone who, um, who wrote in uh, that was on the pre- and, and talked about how uh, she had an issue with something, and so we kind of responded right away and said, you know, that's too bad. Uh, please reach out to us at XYZ address, and we'll take care of it. So we don't bury under the rug any of those, those feedback that are, that are not negative. Um, we also keep it conversational like we do with, with Facebook. Uh, we have something called Ideal Talk and Ideal Chats um, that actually go on. We have a celeb-style event. We'll have a particular celebrity like Sarah Jessica, Park, Sarah Jessica Parker in the last couple of days, and we'll have a discussion during that where members can come in and chat with us and our experts about her style and how they feel it matches them. So, and then they engage with other people in the community. Um, and, and it's funny, we come in and our, our Facebook and Twitter, uh, people who are manning those accounts know all of our members by name, and they'll say, oh, wow, Owen hasn't called in in a week or written in in a week, and they'll reach out. So we really have a, a one-to-one uh, name basis uh, relationship with the members. Uh, staying relevant is key, being on top of the major trends and things that are going on. Fashion Week, for example, we did a cool promotion last year where we sent uh, one of our new correspondents to Fashion Week for the first time, and she would tweet from Fashion Week, and she's able to get into cool shows, and she's sitting front row, and she kind of would send pictures. She's like, oh, my God, I'm here. And people really resonated with that and could relate to the fact of someone going to Fashion Week for the first time uh, and gave kind of a name to, to our correspondent there. Um, and then listening. We, we take the feedback from all of our customer service channels, uh, customer channels, including Facebook and Twitter, and I'll get into a case study particularly on a, on a new business line we launched around special sizes. Um, so on Facebook and actually on Twitter as well, in the end of 2010, we got some feedback from members about special size, uh, whether it's petite or plus size sales, and the fact that sites like ours really weren't catering to that particular market segment. Um, so we, we reached out to them and said, you know, tell us more about what you're looking for, et cetera, et cetera. And the next slide uh, was this long stream that we initiated with our members and a back and forth conversation. And the woman initiating the conversation was, was on our side and saying, this is what I like in a plus size dress. And people commented on it back and forth. And we took that feedback and put it together and, um, and said, you know, here, here's really an opportunity, and it's a need that our base is screaming for. Let's do something about it. So this whole conversation was really part of our market research to figure out how actually we go after that category. Um, so the result of that is now we have 
uh, biweekly we have plus size sale events, and we feel like we're the first of, of you know in our space to have a dedicated uh, effort or program around this, and our members absolutely love it. Um, on Facebook, we had uh, uh, to date over quarter million impression uh, quarter million impressions on that particular content. Um, on Twitter, we made two million, nearly two million impressions on that content. And uh, from a sales standpoint, which is uh, you know why we're all here on a bottom line, we exceeded sales on those categories by 60% because of this engagement, the customer feedback, and as well as we really tapped into a specific need through social media where maybe there was another forum that it made, didn't make sense for that for us, you know, to, for people to, to comment on. But in that social environment, someone makes the comment, we respond, someone else comes on board, and it, you know, all of a sudden you have this momentum and this movement to, to, to drive a business to change the way they're doing things, which... We, was, we, we felt great for our members. We felt great for our business, obviously, but um, it, was a, it was a great case study along those lines. So one of the things that, that I'd like to kind of talk about, which is really new, I was mentioning to the panel before, we just launched a new contest uh, today on Facebook for those of you with kids. Uh, we have a, we're kind of relaunching our kids category and, and expanding with, with better, uh, better items and merchandise, but we have a contest on Facebook for people to submit their kids for a model competition, so uh, many ideally we call it, and uh, our Facebook fans um, will, uh, will vote on the submissions, and then we will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take those top five or so and then select the top one. The winner is going to get invited to New, York, to New York to do a photo shoot at Ideally with, uh, with their families, stay in a hotel, and, and have their kid be on a, you know, one of the next model shoots for, for Ideally. So we're really excited about that. It didn't make the slide because it just launched today and uh, uh, wasn't timely enough, but uh, look, look forward to that. And I think just, just in a closing, um, echoing a lot of what, what the panel said, you know, for us, social media is, is a critical, critical part of our business and has delivered meaningful results from a revenue and engagement standpoint. I think there's the right balance to strike between promotion and conversation. I mean, for us, particularly with a five million person community in a very competitive space, our differentiation is that one-to-one -one dialogue. And, and our main focus is to establish that first. Uh, without being overly promotional, but then there is that aspect of the contest, which, uh, as we've seen as well, just, just drives a lot of engagement. But striking that right balance for us, um, and I think for a lot of businesses, is the critical thing to do. But that's it. Thanks. Uh, okay, so I've been um, a really poor time manager, uh, so we don't have a ton of time, but if there are some questions, I'm sure we could stay just a little bit longer to answer them. Okay. I'll try to repeat if people can't hear. How about the male demographic? How are you going to engage that? Or is that an idea that you can do both? Do you want to repeat the question before you? So yeah. The question is around the male, the male demographic. So, you know, there's, there's two ways of looking at this space. I mean, we, we do have a men's category, and we're um, predominantly women at this point, as, as we mentioned, and we are moving to expand that, as well as our kids' category and travel and, and home. Um, there's two ways of looking at, at men in our, in our from our standpoint, one, it's the woman buying for the men, as my wife buys all my clothes for me, so I can attest to that. But then there's also the male shopper, which is a completely different animal than the women shopper, as we, we can attest to. So we're definitely looking into expanding there. Um, and I think there's a complete different dem uh, dynamic on social for them. There's a dy different dynamic on a shopping experience. You know, I think Bonobos has done a great job of capturing that sentiment a little bit. I and mean, I think, ironically, men maybe are perhaps more reticent to buy online. The women are, and, and I think we need to tackle into that and maybe tailor our, the way we set up our shopping experience to that. Uh, but it's definitely in the works, and, and you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity. So, uh, but we are looking at it in two ways, both the women you know, shopping for their guy and, and, and from the opposite way. And I signed up today, so I think it's, it's solved. Yeah, it worked. It's working great. Actually. Anyone else? Down to socializing on Facebook and selling and making impressions and having conversations. How 
are we going to get granular and really speak to those four different trends? And especially, you know, uh, this is just sort of my general feeling. Mm. That's really fascinating because you talked about user engagement and what <coughs> happens with the, and when it comes down to actually just making recommendations, I would imagine there's four people within that circle that are trying to make those recommendations. Yeah, I think I think that's a that's a great point. I mean, there's. Uh, and we are looking into the social sharing aspect and how we how we effectively do that. I mean, there's, as you said, there's, uh, and we see it with our our telefriend program where we we award as a, similar to a lot of sites we award uh, members who refer buyers a credit. So I think it's like good behavior begets good behavior. And and I think we we're in the initial stages of figuring out how to how to get to those four people and target it down. Uh, but I think that's critical. I mean, it's getting more and more expensive to acquire members in the open market. So. How do you get people that are that are really targeted to what you um, what you're selling? And I think it, for a lot of businesses, your top members are generating a lot of your revenue. So you're always trying to get more of those people. Um, Facebook is is you know the balance we we always have to strike. And I think a lot of these folks is not trying to overly sell, but have that conversation and work it into a sale down the road. So um, you know I don't know if we're there yet, but we're definitely looking at that as a as something yeah. down the road. And I think that's one of the reasons we did the Club Skinny. Um, uh, uh, program with, uh, with that brand, um, we have this small contingent of, you know, if we have 200,000 people, 5% are the people who are super passionate. We're going to learn the most from them. They're going to they're gonna advocate the most for us. And, and to be able to actually tie, um, uh, uh, knowing who that person is through their, their ID that they've signed up for at Nestle with their Facebook ID, um, and, and, and then watch that behavior on Facebook and the actions they take on the site through OpenGraph. We can now um, keep an eye on them and really know who is the most vocal, who is telling their friends the most, who has the most positive things to say, which which particular product lines they they like. So we're in that we're in the first stages of watching that. The next phase is going to be now how do we tap that and grab that five percent, pull them into focus groups, fly them in, get get them get them in talking about the brand. What can we learn from them, and how do we get them back out uh, uh, marching for us? So that's that's the way to do it. Um, in terms of the content that we have uh, on Yahoo and, and, and just to elicit uh, more sharing uh, on Facebook, we did a study, um, um, a social sharing study uh, with Added Value, which is a WPP company, and, and, and what they found in that study is, is the more controversial topics, the more politically uh, uh, um, uh, motivated, the more sensitive topics uh, were uh, the articles or the types of content that uh, people were more likely to react to um, um, and elicit a response. So I think we try to incorporate that into um, um, into our Yahoo News uh, Facebook fan pe uh, uh, feed. Um, uh, so I think incorporating some of those elements could help. Um, also in terms of content, um, again, huge TV events and entertainment events uh, uh, really drive a lot of engagement and we try to incorporate um, and share those themes across our properties who have fan pages on Yahoo.